Ephesus was an ancient Greek city on the coast of Ionia, three kilometers southwest of present-day Selkuk in Izmir province, Turkey. It was built in the 10th century BC on the site of the former Arzawan capital by Attic and Ionian Greek colonists. During the classical Greek era it was one of the twelve cities of the Ionian League. The city flourished after it came under the control of the Roman Republic in 129 BC. According to estimates, Ephesus had a population of 33,600 to 56,000 people in the Roman period, making it the third largest city of Roman Asia Minor after Sardis and Alexandria Troas. The city was famed for the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In 268 AD, the temple was destroyed or damaged in a raid by the Goths. It may have been rebuilt or repaired but this is uncertain, as its later history is not clear. Emperor Constantine the Great rebuilt much of the city and erected new public baths. Following the Edict of Thessalonica from Emperor Theodosius I, what remained of the temple was destroyed in 401 AD by a mob led by Saint John Chrysostom. The town was partially destroyed by an earthquake in 614 AD. The city's importance as a commercial center declined as the harbor was slowly silted up by the Kukuk Menderes River. Ephesus was one of the seven churches of Asia that are cited in the Book of Revelation. The Gospel of John may have been written here. The city was the site of several 5th century Christian councils. It is also the site of a large gladiator's graveyard. The ruins of Ephesus are a favorite international and local tourist attraction, partly owing to their easy access from Adnan Menderes Airport. History Neolithic Age The area surrounding Ephesus was already inhabited during the Neolithic Age, as was revealed by excavations at the nearby Hoyukavar Valley and Kukurasai. Bronze Age excavations in recent years have unearthed settlements from the early Bronze Age at Ayasaluk Hill. According to Hittite sources, the capital of the kingdom of Arzawa was Apisar. Some scholars suggest that this is the later Greek Ephesus. In 1954, a burial ground from the Mycenaean era with ceramic pots was discovered close to the ruins of the Basilica of St. John. This was the period of the Mycenaean expansion when the Akiwa settled in Asia Minor during the 14th and 13th centuries BC. Scholars believe that Ephesus was founded on the settlement of Apisar, a Bronze Age city noted in 14th century BC Hittite sources as being under the rule of the Ariawans, most probably the name of the Achaeans used in Hittite sources. Period of Greek migrations Ephesus was founded as an Attic Aeonian colony in the 10th century BC on the Ayasaluk Hill, three kilometers from the center of ancient Ephesus. The mythical founder of the city was a prince of Athens named Androclos, who had to leave his country after the death of his father, King Cadrus. According to the legend, he founded Ephesus on the place where the Oracle of Delphi became reality. Androclos drove away most of the native Carian and Lelygian inhabitants of the city and united his people with the remainder. He was a successful warrior, and as a king he was able to join the twelve cities of Ionia together into the Ionian League. During his reign the city began to prosper. He died in a battle against the Carians when he came to the aid of Priene, another city of the Ionian League. Androclos and his dog are depicted on the Hadrian Temple frieze, dating from the 2nd century. Later, Greek historians such as Pausanias, Strabo and Herodotus and the poet Carlinos reassigned the city's mythological foundation to Ephos, queen of the Amazons. The Greek goddess Artemis and the great Anatolian goddess Kybella were identified together as Artemis of Ephesus. The many-breasted Lady of Ephesus, identified with Artemis, was venerated in the Temple of Artemis. One of the seven wonders of the world and the largest building of the ancient world according to Pausanias. Pausanias mentions that the temple was built by Ephesus, son of the river god Kays Trus, before the arrival of the Ionians. Of this structure, scarcely a trace remains. 
archaic period about 650 BC, Ephesus was attacked by the Sumerians who raised the city, including the Temple of Artemis. After the Sumerians had been driven away, the city was ruled by a series of tyrants. Following a revolt by the people, Ephesus was ruled by a council. The city prospered again under a new rule, producing a number of important historical figures such as the elegiac poet Callinus and the iambic poet Hipponax, the philosopher Heraclitus, the great painter Parasius and later the grammarians Enidotos and physicians Soranus and Rufus. About 560 BC, Ephesus was conquered by the Lydians under King Croesus, who, though a harsh ruler, treated the inhabitants with respect and even became the main contributor to the reconstruction of the Temple of Artemis. His signature has been found on the base of one of the columns of the temple. Croesus made the populations of the different settlements around Ephesus regroup in the vicinity of the Temple of Artemis, enlarging the city. Later in the same century, the Lydians under Croesus invaded Persia. The Ionians refused a peace offer from Cyrus the Great, siding with the Lydians instead. After the Persians defeated Croesus, the Ionians offered to make peace, but Cyrus insisted that they surrender and become part of the empire. They were defeated by the Persian army commander Harpagus in 547 BC. The Persians then incorporated the Greek cities of Asia Minor into the Achaemenid Empire. Those cities were then ruled by satraps. Ephesus has intrigued archaeologists because for the archaic period there is no definite location for the settlement. There are numerous sites to suggest the movement of a settlement between the Bronze Age and the Roman period. But the silting up of the natural harbours as well as the movement of the Caesta River meant that the location never remained the same. Classical period Ephesus continued to prosper, but when taxes were raised under Cambyses II and Darius, the Ephesians participated in the Ionian revolt against Persian rule in the Battle of Ephesus, an event which instigated the Greco-Persian Wars. In 479 BC, the Ionians, together with Athens, were able to oust the Persians from the shores of Asia Minor. In 478 BC, the Ionian cities with Athens entered into the Delian League against the Persians. Ephesus did not contribute ships but gave financial support. During the Peloponnesian War, Ephesus was first allied to Athens but in a later phase, called the Decelan War, or the Ionian War, sided with Sparta, which also had received the support of the Persians. As a result, rule over the cities of Ionia was ceded again to Persia. These wars did not greatly affect daily life in Ephesus. The Ephesians were surprisingly modern in their social relations. They allowed strangers to integrate, education was valued, through the cult of Artemis. The city became a bastion of women's rights, Ephesus even had female artists. In later times, Pliny the Elder mentioned having seen at Ephesus a representation of the goddess Diana by Timorata, the daughter of a painter. In 356 BC the Temple of Artemis was burnt down, according to legend, by a lunatic called Herostratus. The inhabitants of Ephesus at once set about restoring the temple and even planned a larger and grander one than the original. Hellenistic period when Alexander the Great defeated the Persian forces at the Battle of Granicus in 334 BC. The Greek cities of Asia Minor were liberated. The pro-Persian tyrant Sipax and his family were stoned to death, and Alexander was greeted warmly when he entered Ephesus in triumph. When Alexander saw that the Temple of Artemis was not yet finished, he proposed to finance it and have his name inscribed on the front. But the inhabitants of Ephesus stammered, claiming that it was not fitting for one god to build a temple to another. After Alexander's death in 323 BC, Ephesus in 290 BC came under the rule of one of Alexander's generals, Lysimachus. As the river case silted up the harbour, the resulting marshes caused malaria and many deaths among the inhabitants. The people of Ephesus were forced to move to a new settlement two kilometres further on, when the king flooded the old city by blocking the sewers. 
This settlement was officially called Arsinia after the king's second wife, Arsino II of Egypt. After Lysimachus had destroyed the nearby cities of Lebedos and Colophon in 292 BC, he relocated their inhabitants to the new city. Ephesus revolted after the treacherous death of Agathocles giving the Hellenistic king of Syria and Mesopotamia Seleucus I Nicator an opportunity for removing and killing Lysimachus, his last rival, at the Battle of Choropedium in 281 BC. After the death of Lysimachus the town again was named Ephesus. Thus Ephesus became part of the Seleucid Empire. After the murder of King Antiochus II Theos and his Egyptian wife, Pharaoh Ptolemy III invaded the Seleucid Empire and the Egyptian fleet swept the coast of Asia Minor. Ephesus came under Egyptian rule between 263 and 197 BC, when the Seleucid king Antiochus III the Great tried to regain the Greek cities of Asia Minor. He came into conflict with Rome. After a series of battles, he was defeated by Scipio Asiaticus at the Battle of Magnesia in 190 BC. As a result, Ephesus came under the rule of the Italid king of Pergamon Eumenes II. When his grandson Italus III died without male children of his own, he left his kingdom to the Roman Republic. Roman period Ephesus, a territory that was traditionally Greek to the core, became a subject of the Roman Republic. The city felt the Roman influence at once. Taxes rose considerably, and the treasures of the city were systematically plundered. In 88 BC Ephesus welcomed Archelaus, a general of Mithridates the Great, king of Pontus, when he conquered Asia. This led to the Asiatic Vespers, the slaughter of 80,000 Roman citizens in Asia, or any person who spoke with a Latin accent. Many had lived in Ephesus. But when they saw how badly the people of Shios had been treated by Zenobius, a general of Mithridates, they refused entry to his army. Zenobius was invited into the city to visit Philipman, the father of Monoma, the favorite wife of Mithridates, and the overseer of Ephesus. As the people expected nothing good of him, they threw him into prison and murdered him. Mithridates took revenge and inflicted terrible punishments. However, the Greek cities were given freedom and several substantial rights. Ephesus became, for a short time, self-governing. When Mithridates was defeated in the First Mithridatic War by the Roman consul Lucius Cornelius Sulla, Ephesus came back under Roman rule in 86 BC. Sulla imposed a huge indemnity, along with five years of back taxes, which left Asian cities heavily in debt for a long time to come. When Augustus became emperor in 27 BC, he made Ephesus the capital of proconsular Asia instead of Pergamum. Ephesus then entered an era of prosperity, becoming both the seat of the governor and a major center of commerce. According to Strabo, it was second in importance and size only to Rome. Until recently the population of Ephesus in Roman times was estimated to number up to 225,000 people. More recent scholarship regards these estimates as unrealistic. Such a large estimate would require population densities only possible in modern times, or extensive settlement outside the city walls. This would have been impossible at Ephesus because of the mountain ranges, coastline and quarries which surrounded the city. The Wall of Lysimachus has been estimated to enclose an area of 415 hectares. Not all of this area was inhabited due to public buildings and spaces in the center and the steep slope of the Bulbuldagi mountain, which was enclosed by the wall. Jerome Murphy O'Connor uses an estimate of 345 hectares for the inhabited land, using an average population density of 400 to 500 per hectare. He calculates that Ephesus would have had a population between 138,000 and 172,500, with a preference for the higher figure. J.W. Hansen estimates the inhabited space to be smaller at 224 hectares. 
He argues that population densities of 150 or 250 people per hectare are more realistic, which gives a range of 33,600 to 56,000 inhabitants. Even with these much lower population estimates, Ephesus was one of the largest cities of Roman Asia Minor, ranking it as the largest city after Sardis and Alexandria Troas. The city was famed for the Temple of Artemis, the Library of Celsus, and a theatre which was capable of holding 25,000 spectators. This open-air theatre was used initially for drama, but during later Roman times gladiatorial combats were also held on its stage. The first archaeological evidence of a gladiator graveyard was found. In May 2007, Ephesus also had several major bath complexes built at various times while the city was under Roman rule. The city had one of the most advanced aqueduct systems in the ancient world with multiple aqueducts of various sizes to supply different areas of the city, including four major aqueducts. They fed a number of water mills, one of which has been identified as a sawmill for marble. The city and temple were destroyed by the Goths in 263 AD. This marked the decline of the city's splendor. Byzantine era, the Emperor Constantine I rebuilt much of the city and erected a new public bath. Ephesus remained the most important city of the Byzantine Empire in Asia after Constantinople in the 5th and 6th centuries. Emperor Flavius Arcadius raised the level of the street between the theatre and the harbour. The Basilica of St. John was built during the reign of Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century. The city was partially destroyed by an earthquake in 614. The importance of the city as a commercial center declined as the harbor was slowly silted up by the river despite repeated dredging during the city's history. The loss of its harbor caused Ephesus to lose its access to the Aegean Sea, which was important for trade. People started leaving the lowland of the city for the surrounding hills. The ruins of the temples were used as building blocks for new homes. Marble sculptures were ground to powder to make lime for plaster. Sackings by the Arabs first in the year 654 to 655 by Caliph Muawiyu I, and later in 700 and 716 hastened the decline further. When the Seljuk Turks conquered Ephesus in 1090, it was a small village. The Byzantines resumed control in 1097 and changed the name of the town to Hyas Theologos. They kept control of the region until 1308. Crusaders passing through were surprised that there was only a small village, called Iasaluk, where they had expected a bustling city with a large seaport. Even the Temple of Artemis was completely forgotten by the local population. The Crusaders of the Second Crusade fought the Seljuks just outside the town in December 1147. Turkish era the town surrendered, on October 24, 1304, to Sasa Bey, a Turkish warlord of the Mentesigalari Principality. Nevertheless, contrary to the terms of the surrender the Turks pillaged the Church of St. John and deported most of the local population to Thyria, Greece when a revolt seemed probable. During these events many of the remaining inhabitants were massacred. Shortly afterwards, Ephesus was ceded to the Idanid Principality that stationed a powerful navy in the harbour of Iasolug. Iasoluk became an important harbour, from which the navy organised raids to the surrounding regions. The town knew again a short period of prosperity during the 14th century under these new Seljuk rulers. They added important architectural works such as the Isa Bay Mosque, caravansaries and Turkish bathhouses. Ephesians were incorporated as vassals into the Ottoman Empire for the first time in 1390. The Central Asian warlord Hamelain defeated the Ottomans in Anatolia in 1402, and the Ottoman Sultan Bayezid I died in captivity. The region was restored to the Anatolian Beyliks. After a period of unrest, the region was again incorporated into the Ottoman Empire in 1425. Ephesus was completely abandoned by the 15th century. 
Nearby Ayasalug was renamed Sel Kuk in 1914.